All right, and to do that, we're going to use the inspector, All right? And there's not a lot of slides for this. There's no explanation here. Um, but what I want you to know is that it's our ability to read and manipulate code on any website, any website, which is really cool um, and fun to do. I'm gonna show you how this works. All right, so let's jump back to where we were. So this can be done on any page, but for now we're gonna do it on our web page. So you right click anywhere on the screen and you choose inspect. All right, this should be available everywhere. I'm gonna close this, we're gonna do it here. I updated everything the way I want it. Yes, okay, cool. So right click and inspect. Now yours may pop up on the left, yours may pop up on the right. Right here, there's these options here on the triple dots. You can kind of decide where to position it. I don't mind it being to the right. And so remember how I told you that um, every web browser takes the HTML, takes the CSS, processes it, and then shows it to the user, right? That's what's happening every time that we work with this. And so this is the result of those things. So this code here isn't the file, it's not the HTML file, it's the result of the browser processing the file and creating information from it. Same with what we see down here, style, styles, right? This is a styles tab. This is the result of what the browser processed, okay? So this is like the end result. We put something in and this is what comes out. And you'll see that this is built up kind of like a tree. So we're able to nest things and look at things. And so we're able to just look at what's going on here. Uh, now keep in mind that anything we change as I start to change values will not reflect on the files themselves. So if I do anything here, like if I take a paragraph I right click and I decide I want to delete element. It will delete my paragraph. Although if I go back to the code editor, it doesn't actually change the file. It just changes what's being seen on the page as we look at it, okay? This is like a very temporary thing, um, which includes as well, if I click on body, we know the body tag was styled with the color. So I can go here and I can change the color using the color value, right? And get really obnoxious with all these colors. So if I wanted to get really crazy and do like fuchsia, I could. And I might decide, no, I think the font needs to be black now, right? So I can go in and I can change the properties and values manually and I can go into the HTML. I can even like double click and change the, the sentence, right? And we see that it changes right as I make these interactions. Um, but the files themselves stay the same, right? Because the browser has already processed it. So there's no reverse action here, right? But it's very useful in trying to get things to work before you're, you know for sure, right? Maybe you don't like this color. Maybe you need to take some time and use the color picker to decide, okay, this is the right color. I'm going to lighten it up and I'm going to use this value. So what you can do is you can copy this value and go back here and change it. All right. Oh, that's too many hex. Why is it? Oh, I see. I need to not, this is a alpha. This is an alpha thing. I need to not change it there. I need to change it here like that. So that's kind of cool. It's like a soft, soft color. And I think I've lost it already. Okay, that's fine. So you can kind of get stuck. If you ever get lost or you've done something the wrong way or you're kind of confused, right? Uh, let's go ahead and switch this back to hex. This little sidebar here gives me that option. And I only need one pound sign. And so if I do that, uh, now my code is updated with that value. Um, and then whenever you're in doubt, and you're like, I don't like what I did. I need to undo my action. You just reload the page and everything goes back to the way it was. So why don't I actually put it back to blue? So you just reload the page. And unfortunately, everything's lost. So if you do go in here and you're tinkering and you're trying to change values, 
um, those things those things are gone uh, forever uh, but that's okay because it's just it's just meant for experimenting and making sense of things um, so i always have fun with this i like to go to like some website for like breaking news and you know i'm sure we're going to see what we expect to see um, we can kind of have fun with this we can inspect so if you right click and inspect something specifically we're going to start to see how complicated websites can really get so here's an example very complicated website right and they have a header two h2 and they have all sorts of properties and values but if i double click on the text i can say i could just change it to like man in suit stairs Right, so I can do something silly like that and you'll see that it changes the website, right? Just temporarily uh, on my browser, it can change the values that I wanna work with. So of course, man in suit, looks the camera for eight hours straight, kind of silly, right, kind of fun. But you can see that you can uh, even reverse engineer certain things if you really wanted to. So if I wanted to know the font size, I could go in here and see that for now, this system is saying the font size is 36 pixels. So if I wanted to recreate font that's this size, I could use the same value, right? And be careful when you copy and paste. You don't want to just copy and paste things like, you know, blankly. Uh, and, and there's a conversation around plagiarism as well. You don't want to just openly take something from someone else that's not yours. But because the web is open and because all of this information is available to us, that's just the way these languages work, um, we can take inspiration from others and we can learn from others by looking at how they do things. Okay. So that is the Chrome inspection tool. And as you spend time in it, and as you kind of learn more about it, there's some really powerful ways to deal with it and to work with it.